How's it going Guardians, Shifty here and Season 16 is coming to an end very soon. So I thought there was no better time to go over my top craftable weapons for Season of the Risen and the Witch Queen. Now I'm going to approach this a little bit differently than other people may approach it. When other people create their lists, sometimes they pick the best weapons and sometimes they pick their favorites. But for my video today, I pick the weapons based on how much I use them over the season. So I have a list of 7 craftable weapons that I use the most over the course of Season of the Risen. Now of course on my list there's bound to be some weapons that everybody loves, but I think there's going to be a few surprising weapons that not many people enjoy. In this video I won't dwell too much on what I consider god rolls, I think people should find their own personal god roll. In the past I've tried weapons that people have said are god rolls and it just didn't feel right to me until I got a different roll. However I will talk about some perks that I enjoyed on these craftable weapons. Before I get into my list, if you end up enjoying today's video, make sure to hit that like button and if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe as well. Alright, so to find my weapon usage for the season, I use the Charlemagne bot on Discord. We're going to start with 4 PvE weapons and then I'm going to talk about 3 weapons that I've been using in PvP. One of those PvP weapons has also been used extensively in PvE as well. That one will be at the end of the video because it's been my absolute favorite weapon that is craftable in this season. So to start things off, we're going to begin with one that's kind of obvious as it's one of the only exotic weapons you can craft. That weapon is the Osteostriga Submachine Gun. This is a new weapon that was added with the Witch Queen and it's been one of my favorite weapons over the course of the season. I have over 8000 kills on mine and I think it's probably one of the better overload weapons for Season of the Risen. I used it pretty extensively over my 120 attempts to solo the birthplace of the vile Grandmaster Nightfall. I've enjoyed using this weapon so much because it has that toxic overload which is great for ad clear. On top of that it applies poison to a higher health target and it's actually a pretty solid primary weapon for dealing with difficult enemies. Given this is an exotic weapon there isn't much customization to be had here, you can customize the barrel and the magazine options as well as the stock options. But it is still technically craftable so that's why it's here on my list. The next weapon on my list is the Likely Suspects Fusion Rifle. This is the craftable throne rolled fusion rifle and it is a rapid fire frame. Now this one isn't all that surprising to me, even though particle deconstruction went away with the launch of the Witch Queen, rapid fire frame fusion rifles are still excellent weapons for PvE. In fact, the likely suspects fusion rifle has been my go to choice for the Vow of the Disciple raid. I use it for pretty much every encounter except the very first encounter. Whenever I run out of heavy ammo it makes an excellent damage backup. None of the bosses in the raid are all that far away so it being a short to mid range weapon isn't a big deal. Now the current setup I have on mine is enhanced firmly planted and enhanced successful warm up. This was intended to be for the crucible but I haven't really used it all that much in the crucible and I don't like it all that much in the crucible in fact. I've used this one far more in PvE and that's why it's appearing on this list. Next up is a weapon that's not all that popular and it might be surprising to some of you. That weapon is the Pointed Inquiry Scout Rifle from the Throne World. Now overall scout rifles are not in a great place. High impact frame scout rifles are in an even worse place. However I did find use in this weapon this season because scout rifles did have anti-barrier mods and this one you can actually craft with adaptive munitions. In fact that's been one of my favorite new perks because it allows you to use weapons that don't match an elemental shield in match game activities. I know Arbalist is currently the anti-barrier king and it's great against all elemental shields but sometimes you just want to use Gallarhorn and you don't have that many other options. So in the cases where I wanted to use an exotic heavy weapon I've been using Pointed Inquiry instead of Arbalist. Adaptive Munitions is honestly one of the few saving graces for this weapon. Next up is the pretty well known Palmyra B Rocket Launcher. Throughout this entire season this has gained quite a reputation as a pretty good DPS option. Not only is it a great DPS option but it has several perks that are worth crafting on it. For my particular role I have enhanced auto loading holster and enhanced lasting impression but for that fourth column you can go with explosive light or you could go with chill clip. Both of those perks make excellent options in that final column. Overall this has been a really excellent rocket launcher for me. I've used it in some dungeons and I've used it in other end game activities. So far I've gone over 4 craftable PvE weapons that I've used quite a bit in Season of the Risen. Next up are the 3 craftable PvP weapons that I've really had a lot of fun with. I'm going to start off with the obvious one and that is the Peace of Mind Pulse Rifle. This thing is an absolute monster in the Crucible and if you haven't given it a go, I highly recommend trying it. It is a rapid fire frame and those haven't been super popular but this one just feels really good to use in PvP. 
So I do want to go over my roll here. I do have Arrowhead Break on mine. I also have Ricochet Rounds. I have Enhanced Heating Up and Enhanced Elemental Capacitor. And for this perk, I generally run a Void subclass to get that extra stability. As you can see over there on the stat bar, the stability is 92 and it makes it feel all the more consistent. And next season, that's really going to help out, especially because it's going to contribute to flinch resistance. Overall, if you're a fan of pulse rifles, I really recommend crafting this one. Even if you're not, I would still give this one a go as it's a really solid weapon all around. I've also enjoyed using this one in PvE to some extent. The next craftable PvP weapon I want to talk about is the Deliverance Fusion Rifle. And this one is a little interesting. I'm not a huge fan of how this one feels, but it is the first legendary fusion rifle in the kinetic slot. I am a huge fusion rifle fan, so I always wanted a kinetic fusion rifle that wasn't Bastion. So since I crafted this one on April 17th, I really haven't leveled it up all that much. I do have some other random rolls that I've been using in PvP though, and it just makes me happy that I can choose a fusion rifle in my kinetic slot so that I can use an energy primary alongside a fusion rifle finally. I'm really hoping they add some more kinetic fusion rifles in the future. Obviously, if we get new elements in the future, those might appear in the kinetic slot as well. But there still might be opportunities to make a straight up kinetic weapon that is also a fusion rifle. Since it is so low level, I haven't really scoped out what perks I want on it. But once I get it leveled up, I'll for sure pick what I think is the best PvP roll. Let me know in the comment section what you think I should make for a god roll PvP deliverance. All right, so we've gone through two PvP weapons. Now the third PvP weapon I've used extensively in both the Crucible and I've used it extensively in PvE activities. For me, it's been one of my absolute favorite weapons for the entire season, and I haven't even been able to craft it yet. I'm currently sitting out of four out of five red borders for it, and this weapon that I'm referring to is the Insidious Pulse Rifle. This of course is the four round burst arc pulse rifle that comes from the Vow of the Disciple raid. Like I said, I'm sitting at 4 out of 5 red borders in order to craft this, so I haven't been able to personally craft it yet, but I do have a couple of great rolls that I've been using. So here I have a roll with Arrowhead Break, Tactical Mag, Demolitionist, and Adrenaline Junkie alongside a Stability Masterwork, and I've been using this a lot in PvE. As you can see, I have over 3,000 kills. Aside from that, I have a random roll that's just okay for PvP. I have Chambered Compensator, I have Appended Mag, Heating Up, and Adrenaline Junkie with, unfortunately, a Reload Masterwork. I am definitely looking forward to get that final Red Border Insidious so that I can craft a really good PvP roll. For PvE, however, I would probably actually craft a roll with Demolitionist and Adrenaline Junkie. I've really been having a lot of fun with that one in endgame content. I've used that in several solo Grandmaster Nightfalls. If you saw my video the other day, I did use this Pulse Rifle while soloing the Grandmaster Scarlet Keep Nightfall on a Warlock. And if you missed it, I did have over a thousand kills on my PvP roll as well. Like I said, I've really been enjoying using this weapon overall this entire season. So if you want to see the top PvE and PvP weapons that I used this season, I'll put those up on the screen right now. Otherwise, that brings us to the end of this video. Leave a comment down below and tell me what craftable weapons you've been using a lot this season. What have been some of your favorite craftable weapons? Also, let me know which ones you're still waiting on a red border to even be able to craft. It's really unfortunate when you can't craft your favorite weapon because you just aren't getting lucky with a certain red border weapon. Anyway, that brings me to the end of today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to like and subscribe. I just want to thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.